Okay guys, let's get started. Our main goal today is to learn all about polarized light. And there's actually a lot of fun things you can do with polarized light. So we'll try and do some interesting demos. Okay, so first thing I want to do is go back to this slide that was just wrong the other day. So I don't know if anybody else went and checked my numbers, but I rechecked my numbers. And uh, this is what I get when I recheck things. So the strength, maximum strength of the electric fields in that laser beam is 850 volts per meter, assuming the beam is a plane wave. And then if you divide that by 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, you get the maximum uh, magnetic field strength, and that's about 1 20th of the uh, Earth's magnetic field. Okay. Okay. Questions on that? So polarized light, we're talking specifically, we're going to focus on plain polarized light. There are other ways, like circularly polarized light. We can talk about that, but we're going to focus on plain polarized light. And so we're talking about electromagnetic waves that look like this. Okay, so, and as we talked about the other day, in this case, if the wave propagates up the screen, then the red vectors represent the electric fields and the blue vectors represent the magnetic fields. So once again, in our plane polarized wave, we have plane polarized electromagnetic wave. We have electric field vectors in one plane, magnetic field vectors perpendicular to the direction of the electric field vectors, and both of those directions are perpendicular to the way the wave itself propagates. Okay, so that's characteristic of a plane polarized, linearly polarized electromagnetic wave. Okay, so where do we get polarized light? There's lots of places to get it from. Although most things will put out unpolarized light. So an incandescent light bulb, you'll get unpolarized light. The sun puts out unpolarized light. Uh, but it's easy to take unpolarized light and make it polarized. Okay? And that, in fact, is what Polaroid made lots of money on until it went bankrupt, at least. Um, but they made lots of money off their polarizers. Okay, so you can actually make things polarized. You can take unpolarized light and turn it into polarized light just by reflecting it off things, bouncing it off things, by selective absorption, we'll focus on that a little bit, and also by scattering, and scattering is what happens in the atmosphere, so sunlight streams into the atmosphere, interacts with molecules, and then changes direction because of that interaction with the molecules, and we call that scattering. And you can get partly polarized or even completely polarized light depending on what direction you're looking at. Okay. Questions on any of that so far? Okay. Okay, so polarization by selective absorption. So we've got a fancy name for this, dichroic materials. Okay. And that's in fact what you're holding in your hand. Okay, so you have two pieces of dichroic material. And what that does is it absorbs light with electric field vectors in a particular direction. And electric field vectors that are perpendicular to that direction will go right through. Okay. And the way it does this is it's made up of long chain molecules, in fact. And the molecules are all lined up. And so you can drive electrons back and forth along the length of these molecules. Okay, so electric field. Uh, electric fields come along, hit these molecules, and if the field vectors are aligned with the molecules, then a lot of the energy from the beam will go into driving electrons along the length of the, mo of the molecule back and forth. So you lose that energy. And then if the molecules are this way, but the electric fields are this way, perpendicular to that, then you don't lose the energy from that part of the beam. Okay? And so as long as your material is thick enough, you can actually polarize the light that comes through that uh, material. And so this is what you make the lenses of polarizing sunglasses out of. Is, <laughs> is the light coming from the screen polarized? Who can tell? By looking through, if you just take one of your little pieces of black film and look at the light from the screen, how do you know if the light is polarized or unpolarized? The light reaching your eye. How do you know if it's unpolarized or polarized? What can you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all you need are the frames, you'd be all set, eh? Yeah, James. Yeah, that's right. As you, if it was polarized, you could 
rotate your little piece of uh, Polaroid film, and you should see actually no light at all at, at a particular angle. That's right. So what do you see? Lots of light at all angles? OK. Therefore, you probably conclude that it's unpolarized light. OK, fine. Which I would be surprised if it was polarized. But we'll do something, something interesting with this light later on. OK, so two rules we apply. So if we have light, here's some light. We already had some nice light, but that was making some words. So I want some light that's not making words here. So we have some light here, and um, it's unpolarized, which I'll prove to you in a minute. And so I can put, this is how I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to take, I just have a larger version of the um, piece of Polaroid sheet than you guys have. Okay, So you have little rectangles, so I get this big thing. OK, so I'm going to put this down here. And you're going to make a prediction for me. This is the prediction you were, in fact, this is the question we asked you on the pre-session quiz. If you have unpolarized light, you pass it through a polarizer. That's a polarizer right there. You note the intensity is decreased because the polarizer absorbs some of the energy in that light. Okay. If I rotate this thing, what's going to happen to the intensity of that light? Stay the same. OK. So that was what you're supposed to answer on the pre-session quiz for unpolarized light. It doesn't matter what angle this thing is at. OK. So I'm rotating it. Anybody see any change in intensity? No. OK. And the idea, in fact, is that the light that's coming out of the overhead uh, projector here is unpolarized. OK. So if it's traveling up toward this lens here in the mirror, then the electric field vectors are in this plane, in this plane, OK? And you've got as many this way as that way, OK? So this thing, maybe in this orientation, blocks all the stuff in this direction. But it lets through all the stuff in this direction. And if you rotate it, OK, well, now it blocks. Now those, what's blocked and what gets through are 90 degrees to each other, OK? So it still blocks half, and it lets through half at all angles. And that appears to be the case, OK? So, Unpolarized light, you don't care what angle you've got your polarizer set to. All that you care about is the light's unpolarized. To start with, you get half the light through. And the other thing you've got to remember is, once it passes through the polarizer, it's polarized light. Okay. So now the light coming up here to the lens, heading over this way, should be polarized light. And by rotating this, I'm actually changing the direction at which the light is polarized. Okay. Well, now take a look at that part of the screen through your things. And as you rotate them, what do you see? You say, it's not polarized. What is he talking about? Right? I'm going to prove to you that it is polarized. And then we'll talk about why it doesn't look like it's polarized to you guys. Okay, we'll talk about that. And this actually is relevant for 3D movies and why you wear funny glasses and things like that in those movies. OK, so um, I've got a second polarizer. I'm going to put it on top of the first one. OK. And now I've got polar, I'm claiming it's polarized light. This actually will prove that it is polarized light. And as I rotate that polarizer now, when I sit it on top of this one, what's going to happen to the light here? First of all, you're probably going to get, if I just randomly throw this on here, whoo, that wasn't random at all, was it? I blocked just about 100% of the light, looks like. Let's see if I can get, no, that's lighter. I got, it appears to be 100% of the light got blocked. But as I rotate this, I can bring the light back. Now the light's getting through. Okay. And I keep going, and then it gets all blocked again. And so when you start with polarized light, you pass that through a polarizer. It really does matter what angle the transmission axis of your polarizer is set to. OK? 
Okay? If it matches the direction of your light, then all the light gets through. And if it's perpendicular to the direction at which the light is polarized, absolutely none of the light gets through. Okay? Which begs the question, if it's polarized, and I just proved that it was polarized, how come when you look through your polarizer, it doesn't appear to be polarized to you? Okay. Some possible explanations for that. Maybe I was lying about giving you polarizers. We should test these things. Okay? Who's got a way to test what you have in your hand to see if they're polarized? Who can tell? Put them together. And look, okay, and you're putting them together not like this, but like this. Okay, and what do you see? It's dark. You've crossed the polarizers. You get the polarizer at 90 degrees to each other, just like I do, and you see no light going through them. What if you only had one? Then you can't fold it. <laughs> Let's say you had your LCD watch and a polarizer or the LCD screen on your clicker and the polarizer, or the, your LCD readout on your calculator and a polarizer. What could you do to see? You don't have a watch or a calculator or no. Yeah, I got a watch. Here, borrow my watch. There you go. What are you going to do with that? What do you notice? Nothing. No, let me see. Holy cow, I can't read the watch at this particular orientation. Okay. Try that again. You can, yes, my fault, yeah. It's a lot easier that way, yeah. Okay, so what this tells you is that what about liquid crystal displays? Liquid crystal displays make use of what kind of light? Polarized light. Exactly right. So where it's black on the liquid crystal display, it actually lights going in, and then the liquid crystal is not allowing it to come back out. It looks dark in that part. Other places, there's plenty of light coming off. Okay, light's going in there, and the liquid crystal is set. The thing is you can set this just by changing the potential difference across it. You can decide whether the light comes back out or not. So liquid crystals have an interesting behavior that way. Okay, so polarized light in this space, in this space here, then it hits the screen, then it goes out to you, and you can prove with your polarizers that it's not polarized light, right? It's actually the reflection off the screen that gets rid of the polarization. Okay? So, let's see. In this space, is it still polarized? Absolutely right. Definitely polarized. Out here, right here. In there, we did that already. But coming back at us, not polarized. Okay? So, reflecting off the screen gets rid of that polarization. So, some 3D technologies, 3D movie technologies, make use of polarized light. And you use uh, glasses that are polarized one particular way on one side and the other way on the other side. They don't use regular screens like this. You have to have special metal screens that will preserve the polarization when it reflects the light back to you. Okay, so that's why some of the, you have to have special metal screens in those uh, when you're watching 3D movies that make use of polarized light. Okay, are we okay so far? Okay, so we haven't got to our equation that works when you start with polarized light, but this is it. We call it Malice's Law. <clears throat> okay, so you want to know the intensity after you come out of the polarizer? Well, you need to know the intensity you have before you hit the polarizer. That's I naught. And then you multiply by cos squared delta theta. Sometimes you'll, often you'll see this is written as cos squared theta, but I like to write it as delta theta because then it reminds you that this is a difference between two things. Which way is the light itself polarized? At what angle is that? And then 
The polarizer is just about to pass through. What angle is the transmission axis? Okay. If you get delta theta is zero, that means the light is polarized a particular way. The transmission axis is set to that direction. It'll pass 100% of that light. Cos of zero is one. Square that, it's still one. You get 100% of your light through, according to Malice's law. On the other hand, if your polarization direction is one way and your transmission axis, the polarizer you're trying to get through, is perpendicular to that, cos squared 90, zero. No light at all, as we saw here. Okay? And as you rotate that angle, as you change delta theta, you go through that full cycle of cosine squared, all the way from zero up to 100%. So you, want, you can get any percentage you want. You want 23.75%, you, you can figure out exactly what theta to put in there. OK, so there's two rules. You start with unpolarized light, you lose half the light. But don't forget, you do come out polarized. If you start with polarized light, follow Malice's law to figure out the new intensity. And whatever polarizer the thing just went through, that's the angle at which the light is now polarized at. So it has this particular intensity given by Malice's law. And the polarization direction of the light matches the last polarizer it just went through. Are we okay with that? Okay. Okay, okay, I'll tell you what. You guys are all scientists. We like making predictions as scientists, right? So what I'm going to do is um, stand up on the desk, because I love doing that. And I'm going to hold my polarizer just in front of this light where it's kind of whitish, OK? And you're going to tell me what we're going to see when I take my polarizer and just hold it in front of the light that's hitting the screen. And then I'll rotate it just for fun, OK? Any predictions as to what we're going to see when we do that? What's going to happen? I'm going to go out, get, I'm going to get taller, did you say? No. What did you say? <laughs> It'll, things change color? Oh, oh, you're looking at the screen already doing this. Ooh, that's interesting. Really, really? Hmm, okay. Interesting. Okay, so let's see what we got. Isn't that nice? This beautiful purple light. OK, now I'll rotate it. <laughs> and now it's green. And now it's purple again. And who has any possible explanation for that? What's that? So it's some wavelength dependent thing, isn't it? OK. We've got to think about the light source here. Light source is that projector right there on the ceiling. OK. Anybody have any clue as to how these projectors work? How does that projector make white light? Any ideas? To make white light, it actually mixes colors together. How many colors do you need to mix? What are they to make red, green, and blue? It's an RGB projector. It's a red, green, blue projector. Okay? And you note that at one particular orientation of my polarizer, I could make green, couldn't I? That means I was blocking all the red and all the blue at that particular angle and letting all the green through. Because you need equal parts, red, green, and blue, basically, to make white. And then, at another angle, you never saw blue, right? You never saw red, either. You actually saw purple. How do you make purple? That's red and blue. OK, so it turns out, for whatever reason, that projector puts out red and blue with particular polarization directions, the same as each other, basically. And then green is probably perpendicular to that, or certainly at a different angle from that. And but it's got to be pretty close to 90 degrees apart. OK, so that was fun with projectors and uh, polarizers. Questions on that at all? 
OK. So I don't, now I really do need to get taller. So, uh, so we know that there's, there's a nice green at the top of the screen. OK. So you want me to put the green through the polarizer, right? That's what you want me to do. OK, we can do that. We have the technology, right? So <laughs> how's that? Now I get a chance of doing that, eh? OK, so what are we going to do here? OK, so let's see now. So there's the greenish. And then hmm, what, do you, what does it look like there? <laughs> The white is very magenta-like. I would agree. What about the letters? Letters are more grayish, aren't they? Yeah, because there's really no color. The projector doesn't send out red or blue to that part of the screen. It's only sending out green. And we block the green. So it's not sending out much. OK, so we could try all sorts of different colors and do that, but we'd be here for another three days. So let's not do that. We'll try that at home. OK, so we did all that. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, we did that out. And we talked about this. You tried the cross polarizers because you don't see anything. OK, so let's try this out. And uh, this is on your worksheet if you're looking for a place to do this. We start with unpolarized light. It's not very intense. 16 watts per square meter is not very intense, but that's OK. It's at least a nice round number. Well, it actually does make it easy to do the calculation. We pass this through two polarizers. The first question is only about the light emerging from the first polarizer. OK? So we're, we'll remember the second one's there in a couple of minutes. So all I want to know is the intensity of the light when it comes out of the first polarizer is. Which one of those four answers do you like the best? OK, so we got most votes for uh, eight. OK. What do we think? Thoughts on this one? What's the whole key? Yes? Ah, that is the whole key, isn't it? It is unpolarized light to start with. Unpolarized light. OK. Unpolarized light, how much gets through? 50%. Does it matter whether our polarizer is at 20 degrees, 50 degrees, 17.2 degrees? Totally irrelevant, doesn't it? Isn't it? That is. Absolutely right. Are we OK with that? Unpolarized, you're down by 50%. Don't forget also that you're now polarized. Your light is now polarized, of course. And the polarization direction of the light is what angle after it goes through that polarizer that's at 50 degrees? It's at 50 degrees. So that's right. OK. Are we OK with that? Questions at all? OK. So now we've got eight left. we got half of what we started with. OK, there's a very tricky calculation of 50% of 16 is 8. OK. So of course, the next question is, well, we go through the second polarizer. And now what do we have? OK, so after you go through the second polarizer, remember, we're down to 8 watts per square meter after the first one. How much do we have left now after the second one? Go. <clears throat> OK, so we're pretty close to being even between answer two and answer three. OK. And there's still some votes for answer one. All right. So first question is, do we just take a half of the eight and get four? Or do we have to use Malice's law? That's really the first question to ask. And the answer to that question is Malice's law. Because after going through the first polarizer, even though we started with unpolarized light, that was ancient history. Now it's polarized. After passing through the first polarizer, the job of the polarizer is to polarize the light. So it did it. So we now have polarized light. OK. So we've got to apply Malice's law. OK, so can't we just say, here's our intensity. There's our angle of polarizer. This is Malice's law, isn't it? Doesn't it look like Malice's law? 8 co squared, 20 degrees, which 39% of you voted for. Robert? It's not the right angle? 
30. I don't see a 30 up there. Oh, it's what? I wrote it as delta theta in the equation, didn't I? And there was a good reason why I did that, because Robert's exactly right, right? It's the difference between the angle the light is at, what angle is the light at after coming through the 50 degree polarizer? 50 degrees. The difference between that and what's the transmission axis of the next polarizer? 20 degrees. 50 minus 20 is 30 degrees. Okay. Cosine of 30 is, anybody remember? Sine of 30 is a half. Cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2, but fortunately we square it, so root 3 over 2 squared becomes 3 quarters. So you get 3 quarters of the light getting through, intensity wise, and 3 quarters of 8 happens to be 6. Okay. Okay. Questions on that one? So, most of you realize that it's a Malice's Law question. You apply Malice's Law, but you do have to remember that it's a difference between which way the light's at and which way the polarizer is at. Okay? Okay. Questions on that at all? Okay. Okay, so let's try another one. Well, this is actually an explanation, a little bit of an explanation as to what happens there, okay? So, um, once we come through the first polarizer, well, we're, the light's polarized, okay? And I'm claiming this is the angle at which the light's polarized. That's our 50 degrees. And then this is the polarization direction, sorry, the angle at which the transmission axis is for the polarizer. Here's my 20 degrees. And what you can do to try and understand why this much light gets through and this much light gets blocked is you can actually say, I'm going to take a set of uh, a coordinate system aligned with the transmission axis of this polarizer. So here's one direction, and then I've got another direction perpendicular to that. So I'm going to split my, my light, basically, that direction of the light. I'm going to split it up into two pieces. Okay, so you can make light polarized this way by taking light polarized this way and a little bit of light polarized this way. Okay? And this stuff gets entirely blocked by the polarizer, which is why we lose some intensity. And the other stuff is 100% aligned with the polarizer itself, so that stuff gets through. So this stuff gets through, that stuff gets blocked. Okay, so there's a good way to see why you're going to lose some. And you got a cosine factor here. If you do the right angle triangle, you have a cosine. And that's sort of the amplitude goes to the cosine, and then the intensity goes to the amplitude squared, which is why we have a square of the cosine in our equation. Okay with that? Okay. Okay, so now we'll do the same question, only it's a different question. What's different about this question compared to the first question? Starts off polarized. That's exactly right. Okay, so this starts off polarized. So aside from that, it's the same question. 20, uh, 50 degrees, 20 degrees, those are our polarizers. I naught is even 16 watts per square meter. Okay, but the one difference is we start up unpolarized, now we're polarized. Okay, see what you get. Okay, so. Is this a Malice's Law question? Do we apply Malice's Law in this case? Absolutely yes. Okay. And so what angle do we throw in for delta theta for Malice's Law? 30 degrees. Exactly right. Okay, so the light's at 20. The polarizer we're interested in is the first one in the sequence. It's at 50. Okay, so we do. Polarizers at 50, lights at 20, subtract them, 30 degrees, co squared 30. We did that a couple minutes ago. Co squared 30 is 3 quarters, so we get 3 quarters of 16, which is 12. Okay. Are we okay with that? Okay, 58% of you got that. That was good. Okay, so now we're at 12, and of course the next question is well, how much gets through the next one? Remember, the next one is at 20. Second polarizer is 20. The light started out at 20. Okay. Okay, so how much gets through the next one? Go. 
<laughs> Big votes for nine. A uh, few votes for 12, right? And, you know, the answer for 12 is kind of an interesting one, right? So the light was polarized that way in the first place, wasn't it? So shouldn't it all go through that polarizer? If you took the first polarizer away, if you start with 16 watts per meter squared at 20 degrees and you hit a 20 degree polarizer, how much light would go through? 100%. That's true. But the light is no longer at 20 degrees anymore. The light's now at 50. Okay? So you got to go back to Malice's law and say, what's the light at 50? What's the polarizer at 20? Okay, so we get another factor of three quarters coming in here. So we've gone from 16 to 12, 12 down to 9. Are we okay with that? Okay. Okay, so somebody pointed out to me, nicely enough, that uh, there was a question I didn't do. So I'll go back and do it, because I think, I think actually this is one of the neatest things we're going to see all semester, right? Some of you guys are going to go, that's it? But I actually think it's really kind of cool. Uh, of course, I lost my other polarizer, which is kind of critical to this demo. So I start with unpolarized light. Now it's polarized. I can block 100% of that light by adding this other polarizer to this as long as I have it in just the right orientation. So its transmission axis is perpendicular to the first one's transmission axis. And that's pretty darn close to what it is. OK, so we've blocked 100% of the light with what we call crossed polarizers. And you guys can hold your piece of Polaroid like this, and you'll get no light through as well. So now the question is, can I take a third polarizer, add it to this polarizer sandwich here, and get some light out without changing the transmission axis direction of either one of these two here. I can do it? Michelle says, Michelle says yes, and Michelle says no. OK. All right. Let me try. OK, so let's make a prediction. Who thinks we can get light out? Who thinks there's absolutely no way we're going to get light out? OK, so let me try it. I'm going to just throw this on top of my sandwich. And anybody see any light coming through? Correct answer is no. Yes. And if I put it underneath, rotate it, nothing. Is there anywhere else I can put it? I can do what? In the middle. All right. Now, of course, you remember that one polarizer's job is to block half the light, and the other polarizer's job is to block the whole other half of the light, right? Yes. OK. So Michelle says, I can put this in between and get some light out. What do you think? There's some light there. And I can even, let's, let me rotate this a little bit. Oh, I get none. Oh, now I get some. Hey, I got some light there. And I haven't changed the other two because you can still there's there you, you can see they're still 90 degrees to each other. There's no light coming through here, but I'm getting light through there. I mean, this to me it's like magic, isn't it? One polarizer job is to block half the light, the other guy gets rid of the other half, and yet we add a third polarizer, which you might think would only reduce things even worse. You know, make things even worse, but yet now we get light out. Who can explain that? Anybody? Samantha. That's exactly right. So you're actually, the one in the middle, its role is to rotate the direction of the polarization of the light. So it's no longer perpendicular to the one on the top. That's exactly right. OK, so I've tried to arrange my middle polarizer so we get maximum light through. OK? So the top one in the sandwich is 90 degrees to the bottom one. What's the middle one at? To get maximum light out of the sandwich. Middle one's where? Halfway between them. 
45 degrees. Exactly right. Okay? So, the first guy, let's say the first guy just uh, blocks everything in this direction, lets everything through in this direction. Okay? So then we got some stuff, it's all going in this direction, this plane, heading towards you guys. And then you put this on, now, now I'm lost. <laughs> Okay, I need 45 degrees to that. That's about there-ish. Uh, something like that. Okay, so that's about 45 degrees to it. Okay, so um, you can see there's a difference between this and this, right? Okay, so that actually causes some light to be lost because we're going through another polarizer that's at 45 degrees to the other one. What's cos squared 45 degrees, by the way? And you square it to a half, okay? So the first one, you lose a half. The next one, 45 degrees to the first one, a half. And then if you put this at 45 degrees to the last one, you lose another half. You should get an eighth of the light you started with. Whereas if you don't go through the middle one, you just have a half times a zero. Because they're at 90 degrees to each other. Okay? But here, you successfully rotate the direction of the light and then you can actually get light through that last one. It's kind of magical stuff. Okay, but it's just, you know, vectors and, you know, which, how much we have here and there. Are we okay with that? Okay, I think that's a lot of fun to do that. Okay, here's one last thing I'll do with my cross polarizers, which is just to take this lid that I got off the top of a yogurt container. Okay, now, I found this a few years ago. You can't find these anymore because people have, reduce the amount of packaging they put on yogurt containers, which is a good thing, except you can't find this anymore. So why might you want one of these things? So I'm going to take out my middle polarizer and put these cross polarizers back together, and then I'm just going to stick this thing in here, and if you look through here, I mean, it's blue around the edges, but it just looks clear, right? You know, you're looking through a piece of plastic. Okay, so let me throw this one in the middle and see what happens. Oh, it doesn't look any like special there. Ooh. Okay, so, and if I <laughs> rotate this around, okay. So, there's some special molecules to make up that piece of plastic. And what they do is they will actually rotate the direction of the light, the polarization direction of the light, and they do it differently for different colors. Okay, and you can actually get sugar solutions that'll do this too. So you can take like Kiro syrup and you can put that in between cross polarizers and you get some nice color and you put more Kiro syrup in, you get a different color. That's kind of fun to do. So this thing has, this plastic has the same property that it rotates the direction of the polarization of the light. You've got some spiral molecules in there that make that happen actually. And uh, the thicker you make it, the more rotation there is and it works differently for different colors. Okay, any questions on any of that? Okay. Okay, so we should talk a little bit about um, polarization by scattering. Okay, so let's try this out for size. So I'll turn off this thing. That's off, I'll turn this thing off. And all I'm gonna do is shine a laser through this tank of water. Okay? <laughs> Excited. The last thing we should do is test somebody's sunglasses, right? We should do that and talk about... You guys came up with lots of good answers to that question on the pre-session quiz. It was one particular one I was looking for, but you came up with several other ones, which was good. And we'll talk about all that. Okay, so um, I'm shining a light in this tank. Okay? The light's going that way. You can see it on the wall over there. However, you should be able to see, at least people close, should be able to see, you know, the light coming out that way toward you. Robert, do you see any? No, not at all. Okay, fine. Let's do it in the dark then. That's not dark enough. That is though. Okay, so let's try that again. Who can see light coming out of the tank? Toward you, out the side of the tank. Grab your polarizers, okay? Just one, you just need one. And look at it and rotate it. Rotate it, look through it. 
Does it change? Yeah. So this is really one way to explain this is polarization by scattering. Okay? Light coming out is particularly 90 degrees to the way the light goes should really be polarized. If you're not at 90 degrees, you won't see the effect as nicely. Okay? But if you're at 90 degrees, you really should see a nice effect here where at some angles you see almost nothing and at other angles you see most of the light. And this is what happens in the atmosphere. <laughs> okay, so this is what happens to light in the atmosphere. It comes in, and let's say the sun is over there. I'm looking at the sun over there. In fact, I don't want to look at the sun over there. If I go 90 degrees from the sun and look with my polarized sunglasses, that part of the sky, this is what I was explaining in that movie, and some of you obviously... Uh, looked at that or read the part of the book, and I go like this, right? You know, so. But we're scientists, we don't worry about people laughing at us for doing crazy stuff, right? And you should see, if you're wearing polarizing sunglasses, you should see that part of the sky dim and brighten as you go back and forth, okay? Because light coming from that part of the sky should be pretty much fully polarized, because it's changed direction by 90 degrees. And that change of direction, I'll try and explain why that is, okay? so. Um, this is how it works. So, let's say you have a light coming along this way, hitting this molecule. This is a molecule. So, light coming along this way, its electric fields can be in what directions? It can, this direction is fine, right? This direction is fine. But there won't be any of this direction because the electric fields have to be in a direction perpendicular to the way the light's going, and that's this way. Okay, so this way and this way. Fine. So, then if the, if the uh, you know, the molecules are vibrating in there, and then you change direction and go this way, well, the light can come out with polarization that way because there was some of that in the beam originally, right? But it can't come out with polarization this way because there wasn't any of that in the beam to start with. So it's polarized light when it comes out at 90 degrees. Okay, there was one, wasn't there one last thing I wanted to talk about? What was it? Oh, sunglasses. Right. Who wants to test their sunglasses? You want to test yours? Okay, fine. How much did you pay for them? A lot of money. So you really hope these are polarized? You know they're not. Well, if you know they're not, well, we're not going to test them. <laughs> Who has some... Who's a little unsure about their polarized sunglasses? You don't know. How much did you pay for these? You got them for free? <laughs> Definitely not then. Okay. Who else? No. We can try. So on the pre-session quiz, I said there are only two pairs left, right? And so what I was expecting you guys to say is you take the first pair, and then you hold up the first pair with the second pair like this, crossed, and you got one lens from the second pair, one lens from the first pair. What should you see if they're polarized, if they're back to back? Nothing, right? So, But other people said, Put them on, go to the sky, you know, turn back and forth, <laughs> have people laugh at you. That was a great answer. Great answer. Or look at light reflecting off flat surfaces. Do they block the glare or not? Okay, so we're going to test Yevs. How do we do it? Uh, polarized or not? I have no idea. I need another pair of sunglasses. Or I need one of these things, right? What's going to happen if I put this on top of the sunglasses? and change the angle. Let's see. Okay, so we'll see. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay, but that's a pretty easy test, right? And you could use a second pair of sunglasses just like this. Okay, so they look cool, but you know, that's about it. What can you expect for free? Okay, so we'll see you guys on Friday. And please bring back your polarizers. Thanks very much.